Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. Getting into the topic of the day in college football, which is really just an extension of the topics from last week, and that is National Signing Day. If you watch this channel, if you listen to this channel, you know uh, it was a busy week in college football. Alabama signs maybe arguably the number one class in the history of college football. Michigan has a nice finish to things. Ohio State has a nice finish to things. But when National Signing Day wrapped, there were still a few elite players in high school football that had not officially committed in the class of 2021 for next season. And one of those kids made a commitment on Tuesday. Brian Thomas, four-star wide receiver, commits to LSU. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Not only his commitment, but why I actually think it is a huge metaphor for LSU and why I believe they can have a major bounce back into the 2021 season. Not saying they're going to win the national championship. Not saying they're beating Bama. What I am saying, though, is I think that this 5-5 five and five season that we're coming off of is much more of an aberration than what, uh, what we should expect going forward. And I also think, oh, by the way, and we'll talk about it, I think Coach O has had an incredible offseason since things ended against Ole Miss in the final week of the regular season. First of all, let's start with the commitment itself. As I mentioned, Brian Thomas, four-star wide receiver. And the commitment is huge for a few different reasons. The first one is the kid is really good. I mean, it goes without saying, one of the top 100 players in the 2021 class, according to 24-7 Sports. He comes at a position of need. I don't think you can have ever have too many wide receivers in college football. Well, guess what? Not only does LSU return a bunch of really good receivers, my boy Kayshawn Boutte being one of them, but they also signed three of the top 13 receivers in high school football this year. In addition to Brian Thomas, another Louisiana native, Chris Hilton, has committed and signed with LSU. And Deion Smith, a four-star from Mississippi, has committed to LSU. So you get a good player, you get him at a position that you can never have too much talent, and oh, by the way, I just mentioned, kid is from Louisiana, Brian Thomas from Louisiana, which is no small deal as well. With his commitment, LSU signs the top six high school players in the state of Louisiana. For people who are wondering why that's a big deal, first of all, to Coach O's credit, he has largely done a good job recruiting the state of Louisiana since he has taken over as the head coach. But before he got there, there were issues keeping some of the best players in the state in state at LSU, and some of them, most notably this year's Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith, came back to burn it. Beyond that, though, beyond just one kid in one high school class, I do think it's a metaphor for LSU football as a whole. Because as I just said, they were the reigning national champions, and they went 5-5 five and five this year. And I think the natural reaction from across college football was, well, uh, 2019, the, that national championship was a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It'll never happen again. And I guess in theory, if you're arguing, will LSU ever have the greatest team in the history of college football, then yeah, maybe it was a once-in-a-generation thing. But I think with what Coach O has done this offseason, with the changes that he has made, with the players that are returning, I think we are much more likely to come to the conclusion, say 12 months from now, that the 2020 season, which ended with a 5-5 five and five record, was much more of the aberration, and that 2019, where you're in the upper half of the SEC, where you're competing at the highest level, that is going to be the reality going forward for LSU, or at least heading into 2021, I do think we are talking about a major bounce back season. Again, not saying they're beating Alabama, not saying they're winning the national championship, but I think it is going to look much more like 2018 and 2019, two really, really, really good teams, including a national championship team, than this 5-5 five and five team from the past season. And to fully explain why, I think you also, in part, have to go back to the start of this past season. Because I think it's easy to say, well, they won the national championship, but it was a once-in-a-generation thing. It'll never happen again. And like I said, yeah, if we're talking about winning a national championship with the greatest team ever, then yeah, it probably never will happen again. But at the same time, I think you have to realize just how much LSU lost off that national championship team and why they did struggle in the 2020 season. First of all, I've used this stat a million times, but it's incredible. 
LSU had 14 players drafted off that national championship team. That is tied for the most ever in the history of the NFL draft off one team. They had five first rounders. Joe Burrow, of course, the number one overall pick and Heisman Trophy winner. So when you're talking about just losing pure talent, 14 players were drafted, including the Heisman Trophy winner and five first rounders overall. In addition to that, you have a weird offseason. It's, it's worth mentioning you have no offseason. You have no spring practice, essentially, because of COVID. You come back, and two of your best players, one on each side of the ball, opts out of the season. Jamar Chase, a first-round caliber wide receiver, maybe the best wide receiver in college football had he played last year. I, I can't say he'd be better than Devontae Smith, but he was really, really, really talented. He opts out. Uh, Tyler Shelvin, an elite defensive tackle, opts out. And all of a sudden, you're talking about a team that lost, and this isn't a metaphor, this isn't a, a figurative thing, it's a literal thing. They lost the most starters ever off of a national championship team when you factor in both the guys that left, the guys that were drafted, and the guys that opted out. So, of course, it is going to be a little bit of a rebuilding season. And then on top of that, your starting quarterback, Miles Brennan, gets hurt two weeks into the season. And so when I look at what happened last year and I try to contextualize 2019 plus 2020 and what it means going forward, again, I think we're looking much more at the possibility that 2020 was the aberrational season where everything that could go wrong did. As you look ahead to 2021, I think to his credit, Coach O has made quite a few positive changes around the program. First of all, I think it actually started at the end of this past season when LSU could have easily packed in the season and instead won their last two games, right? It's an awful season. You have guys opt out. The team stinks. You're struggling. You have backup quarterbacks playing because the starter gets hurt. And they still went to Florida and beat the Gators in the swamp. They then followed it up by beating Ole Miss on the final day of the season to finish 5-5. Five and five. I thought that was a great sign. Go back. Think about uh, late November, early December, all the turmoil. You have the players opt out. You have the team opting out of a bowl game. You have guys like Eric Gilbert opting out of the season and potentially transferring. Terrace Marshall opting out of the season. And that group rallied to win its final two games. Might not feel like a big deal, but to me it feels like a big deal from this perspective. The guys that were really bought in, that really wanted to be there, that really wanted to be the cornerstone of a national championship caliber team, those were the guys in the locker room for the final two games that built some momentum going into the offseason. On top of that, I love the coaching hires that Ed Orgeron has made this offseason. Now look, I, I say it all the time, I don't claim to be an X's and O's guru. My buddy Carter Bryant, by the way, does an incredible LSU channel that you should check out if you like this video. And he has gone in depth on what Jake Peets means to this offense, on what uh, Demontre Jones means to this defense. Uh, Durante Jones, excuse me, Durante Jones, I apologize. What Durante Jones means to this defense. But when I look at it from the bigger picture, what I see is this. Two young guys from the outside, from the NFL, with new, unique, creative ideas. I like that a lot more than bringing in Bo Pelini last offseason. And by the way, I think Coach O deserves a mulligan for last offseason because he was coming off a national championship. But I think we all knew the Bo Pelini thing probably wasn't going to work. I said it during the season. It felt like hiring Bo Pelini was a great move if this was 1998. Unfortunately, it's 2020, and it did not work out. But I like the new coaching hires. I like the core that is returning. I like the recruiting that was done. And I would add this. I don't think there's very many teams that had a better offseason from the perspective of players taking advantage of that extra year from the NCAA than LSU. Remember, everybody got an extra year of eligibility this coming year because of COVID. So if you wanted to opt out, you didn't have to miss your senior year or junior year, you got an extra year. Well, you look at LSU, Liam Shannon, Ed Ingram, both back on offense, Glenn Logan, Andre Anthony, defense. I mean, we're talking about some of the best players or most important players or most importantly, just veterans in general coming back. And so again, you have new fresh blood on the coaching staff. You have a group of guys that wants to be there. You have a, an elite recruiting class made up primarily of elite players from Louisiana. You have Miles Brennan coming back and you have a bunch of veterans that could have gone pro or could have moved on with their careers instead deciding we want one more shot at college football. And so when you look at all that, on top of the schedule, I think it's shaping up to be a pretty big season in the Bayou for LSU. 
The schedule breaks the way that it did two years ago during the national championship season. You get Auburn at home, who, oh, by the way, first year head coach. No idea what we're going to get from that team. Brian Harson. it's going to be a rebuild and a, a reshuffling, if you will. Florida has a lot of new parts. Kyle Trask, Kyle Pitts off to the NFL. Obviously, Eric Gilbert will be on uh, Florida's roster, but it's worth mentioning there. And of course, on top of that, A&M could potentially be down. You don't play Georgia. And of course, there is the Death Star that's Alabama. But even Alabama breaking in a bunch of new players at a bunch of new positions with a new quarterback. So when I look at LSU, I look at a team that is very interesting, very intriguing, very exciting headed into 2021. They are a team to watch. I think they are due for a major, major bounce back this season.